we solved that was to um, add in, in the, uh, on, on these two lines, here and here, add some, some rod bracing that would be outside the building and hold, hold, the, uh, hold the floor up and, and satisfy flat uh, facade deflections. The center bay, uh, we couldn't put a rod in there because it would be going through someone's office space, so we created a barren deal system there you can see the exterior rods. Um, inside, uh, inside that system, we created a Varen deal uh, moment frame, <laughs> and we had to uh, we had to run that system through multiple series of construction uh, sequences. So as you as you slowly uh, as this as this Varen deal grows taller and taller, the amount of deflections that keep adding up uh, become less and less. So or the increment becomes less and less. So. Uh, at some point, when we when we reach the outrigger zone, we get a we get a uh, we get a brace to the 28th floor. But at that point, uh, we've already accumulated maybe uh, three eighths to, to three quarters of an inch of deflection at the base, um, and so we had to camper all this up. Um, there's the uh, there was a temporary diagonal at the base that was installed and then removed later. Um, the mass is the final uh, the, the the capping. Uh, the cap to this building. It's a 300 foot tall mass. Um, it, it, it is cantilevered uh, off of the top of the building. Basically, uh, it goes, it extends uh, one, one floor into the building, which is a double height story, and, and the wind load on the mass is, is resisted by shear in, in the two floor slabs. Um, the mass of the base is, is eight feet in diameter, uh, and it's big enough to get some of the design team inside, and at the tip, it's, it's uh, it's eight inches. Now these pictures, uh, actually one of these pictures, is, uh, the next picture is on Renzo Piano's uh, website, but the other two may not have ever been seen before. Oh, sorry, Those, that's coming next. Um, the, the mass direction, uh, it was put up in three pieces and it was all bolted. Uh, but here are pictures of, of Serge and Bernard Plattner uh, climbing to the tip of the mass. Um, and and they're, so they're uh, almost 1,100 feet off the ground. Uh, one of the things, if I have time, I want to get into the exterior facade and talk a little bit about uh, what Glenn Hughes at, at the New York Times had done. Um, you see the picture in the top is the uh, facade system. It's, it's clear glass, but it's got this facade of, of ceramic rods out in front that act as a Venetian blind to block sun from entering the building, except for those two vision, except for the vision zones. Um, when, when they heard about how clear, how clear glass was going to be used in this building, they were excited they, and they realized they could uh, get some savings in, in daylight uh, because of the clear glass. Um, David Thurman and Glenn Hughes contacted Lawrence Berkeley Labs, LBL, and said, hey, you know, we want to do some, some, uh, some systems uh, that take advantage of, of our daylighting, um, mainly uh, dimming systems so they can turn some of these lights off and, allow you know, daylighting to be used on a regular basis. But, um, and, and only 2% uh, of office buildings in the, in, uh, in the US use, use dimming systems. Uh, LBL actually turned to them and said, you've got a bigger problem than that. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have too much light coming into your building. You're going to have glare issues. And, and especially in the low angles of sun, you're going to have sun entering this building all the time. So the solution was, in the bottom picture, was to build one quarter of the floor plate uh, on their parking lot at the printing plant in uh, Long Island. And they mocked up uh, exactly one quarter of, of, their, of their floor plate. They put the exact curtain wall on with the exact rod spacings. They put all the furniture that, that they had already designed into the building. Um, they put computer models, uh, monitors in there with, uh, with uh, video cameras. And all of this information, they, they had uh, monitors that, that knew how much light was in the building how much heat was being absorbed into the building, and that was all being sent out to Berkeley, uh, where it was being analyzed. Uh, at the same time, they got shade manufacturers from uh, Meco Shade and, and Levelor to come in and set up their systems and automate those systems with the amount of sunlight that's, adding, uh, that's coming into the building. Uh, they also knew that, that uh, you know, obviously the path of the sun was gonna affect this, so they had computers that, that understand where the sun's gonna be at what part, what time of the day. Uh, and they also have a, a radiometer at the top of the building that would determine if it's a sunny or a cloudy day. So all these systems communicate with each other 
and raise and lower the, the, the sun shading systems automatically, and then dim or turn off lights uh, whenever it's deemed that, that they've got enough light inside the building. Um, it, was, it was an incredibly successful mock-up, and, and it just goes to show how inquisitive uh, the New York Times ownership was uh, to, to go out and spend this kind of money to, to do this study. Lawrence Berkeley Labs got a, a grant from the U.S. government to, uh, to, to do this study also, and, they, and they're using that information now for, for future buildings. David Thurm is an incredible guy at the New York Times, and, and he said that, that uh, you know, the, uh, the best part about innovation is sharing that information. Um, and, and I can get you in touch with David, with David or, or Glenn if you're interested in, in these types of shading systems. Um, it was, uh, it, it really, uh, the other day, Glenn called me up and told me that he was looking out and half the lights in, on his floor were off. And I was looking out at my office and they were all on, so it's really working. That's it.